Okay, so here we have yet another example. Okay, so f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. That is in the numerator. In the denominator, we have 5x plus 10. So we have a quotient function. In other words, some sort of fractional function where the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials. Now, there is a way to do this. Um, just jumping right into it and finding the derivative called the quotient rule and what the quotient rule says is that let's say this is a, a px is our numerator and dx is our denominator the derivative of this if I find dy over dx of this uh, of this what I'll have to do is take the derivative of px times dx minus px times the derivative of dx that's now the denominator okay divided by the derivative d sorry just not the derivative divided by dx squared okay <laughs> you see that is not easy at all and we don't do the this is called the quotient rule we don't do the quotient rule in this course Okay, but there is ways to just jump into this and finding the derivative and if you want to you can try and do this but there's a much much simpler way and that is simply to go and simplify this isn't it possible to maybe simplify this there's many ways to do it I'm going to use the simplest way okay factorizing x the, this goes into two brackets it is x and x x plus 5 and no, I lie, x plus 2 and x plus 3. Okay, that gives me, if I multiply it out, 3 times 2 is 6, three, uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. Divided by, take out a 5 as a common factor there, x plus 2. Okay, now I see uh, this, can cancel with that. So I've got x plus 3 over 5. So now I'm going to distribute the 5 to both of those terms. So I've got x plus 3 over 5, sorry for the cramped space, is equal to 1 over 5 times x. Okay, I'm dividing this coefficient with the 5. And the 3 plus 3 over 5. Okay, um, and <laughs> that's it. Do you see how much simpler this is compared to that? Finding this derivative is simply 1 times 1 over 5 gives me, uh, sorry, let's find the derivative because now they ask me the derivative in the point 3. So let's see. The derivative now of f is equal to 1 over 5, that's the 1 times the 1 over 5, x to the power of 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, so I don't need to write that. Okay, so my the derivative is just 1 over 5. So, if I substitute in x with a 3, well, there's no 3 to substitute in. Does that mean it's 0? No, man. It doesn't matter what x is. The derivative is always 1 over 5. Okay? And remember, this is gradient. This is a formula for the gradient of that thing, which means that that thing has a constant gradient of 1 over 5 everywhere. It means it's a straight line. And here we can see it. The gradient x plus c okay it's simply a straight line like this cutting the y-axis at 3 over 5 okay the only problem is x wasn't allowed to be 2 see a negative 2 because if x is negative 2 we have a uh, 5 times negative 2 to negative 10 plus 10 so here at negative 2 our line would have a little open dot okay uh, it would be called a removable discontinuity. So to draw this line, I wouldn't be able to draw it without lifting my hand because when I get to 2, I'm not allowed to be there. So I must make a little circle to show that it's not included and continue. Okay, so what is the derivative in the point 3? That means when x is equal to 1, 2, 3, okay, what is the gradient there? Well, it's the same everywhere, okay? No matter what I substitute for x, I'll get 1 over 5. So that's 1 over 5. How about the second derivative? Okay, so remember the second derivative is the, deriv the derivative of the derivative. So second derivative means I find the derivative of 1 over 5. But it's a constant. Any constant 
has an x to the power of 0. When I multiply the 0 to the constant, to the coefficient, I get 0. So the derivative of any constant will always just be 0. So what is the second derivative in the point 3? Well, the second derivative is always 0 for this specific function. So even in the point 3, the second derivative would be 0. And uh, yeah, that's this question.